the children of Israel there, my mother leaned over and she said something to me and Brother Mike. She said, you know, they had a purpose. Yeah, uh -huh. they played. They played. Yeah, they played. When they left Egypt, yes, they had a purpose. They had a purpose. All right. They weren't just trying to wander around on their own. Brother, when Pharaoh finally gave them the door to leave, they had a purpose. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, sorry, sorry, brother, we're out of here. They begin to move with a purpose. Oh, yes. yes. And every time you begin to move All with right. a purpose, All right. that old Satan's going to throw his naughty little head in there. Yeah, yeah. He'll do it every time. I promise you he'll do it every time. Yes, he, will. he will put his nose right where it don't belong. Yeah. Uh -huh. But they had a purpose. Yes, they, did. Yes. They, were, they were purposed to leave Egypt. Yes. And they began to move. And they began to move. You know, um, I was involved in a, uh, in a football game. I got the privilege to be involved here in the county at a local high school. And a couple years ago, um, we're playing at home over here at Palmetto High School, and uh, we had one of the best football teams that I had seen in a while in this area. And um, when the game plan began to start, we were very forceful in our offensive game plan. We had a purpose. We knew the opponent that we were facing. We knew we couldn't sit on our heels. We knew what we needed to do. All right. yeah. And going into halftime, we had a 20 to nothing lead. We felt pretty good. And you know what we did at halftime as a coaching staff? We started to play prevent defense. And many of you who understand the game and understand anything in life, when you put yourself back on your heels and you're playing a game or you're, or you're facing a strong adversary, you know what tends to happen? They'll get you off balance. And when you get off balance, you know what happens? You tend to fall down. And you know what happened that night? We lost. We lost. We didn't lose a close game. They had a running back who now plays at a high school here, I mean a college in Florida, that was determined to not let that football team lose. Because we stopped being the aggressor. And I'm going to put the devil on notice tonight. Right. Oh, Brother, we are not backing down from you, son. We ain't giving you what inch. We're not doing it. Put him on notice. Get him marching. We left Egypt. We're going to Canaan land, brother. I'm heading to Canaan land. Will there be a Red Sea in front of me? Sure there will. You know, will there be a desert to wander around in for 40 years? Sure there will. Brother, but brother, there's a Jordan River up ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, Amen. Amen. Man, I tell you what, I worked a 13-hour day today. I was up at 4 o'clock this morning. I didn't feel good. My wife's been trying to give, to give me some medicine. I got off at 6 tonight. I really didn't feel like coming. But I said, you know what, I'm not doing it. I'm not giving that sorry devil an inch. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it because if I miss one, I'll miss the next one. And then my spirit will be down. So you know what? I got home. And once again, I was cramming some rice and fish in me as I was getting ready. My wife, God bless her soul, had my clothes ready. And here I am tonight. And I feel like I got more energy now than I did when I got up this morning. Defeated. I'm telling you what, he's a liar. He's a liar. Sister Cindy, when you were in that hospital room, he was a liar. He's a liar at Blake Hospital right now with Brother Larry. He's a liar with Wesley Clancy. He's a liar with Sister Margie. He's just a liar. I am determined not to give him a solitary single inch. All right. I looked at somebody today. That was yesterday. And I said, if you're living in my past, you're there by yourself. I ain't there anymore. I begin to shout with this fellow, man. We get to, and I, and I was talking spiritually. I wasn't talking about anything. You know what? But you know, 
And this is kind of where it got started. You know, I was speaking to the gentleman that I brought up uh, that has the cancer. Yeah, Richard Hafer, very, very, very good friend of mine. And, and he told me that. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? I brought your name up in prayer Wednesday. You know, you know, in my church. And I said, I want to tell you one thing, Richard. I said, as my friend, I love you. And I said, I love you as my friend, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I believe in the healing power of the Holy Ghost. I know many times we, we've been given, you know, gloomy, doomy things. But then I've seen God step right in on time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. You know, I begin, and this, if you go into a room that you're not familiar with, and, and everybody just turns the lights off on you, it's an uncomfortable feeling to not know where you're at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And if you if you really want to move out of that room or, or that, that place that you're in, what is the first thing that you're gonna do when somebody turns the light on? You're gonna go looking for a door. You're gonna go looking for a door. Get me out of here. Well, brother. When you said it tonight, when he died on the cross, he yes. gave us a door. Yes, you did. He gave me a door. Oh, yes. He showed me where I'm supposed to go. Oh, yes. He gave me a purpose. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He gave me a purpose. Yes. I'm not in this just wandering around no. trying to find my way. All right. He gave me a blueprint on what I need to do. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm All determined right. to do it. Right. I'm determined to do it. Hallelujah. I'm determined. To do it. Oh, yeah. Praise oh, God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful to be Thank here tonight. I'm thankful for all of you being Praise here tonight. Yes. Wonderful group of people here tonight. You know, I'm, I'm so thankful. You know, I'm so thankful to see the smiling faces, um, you know, of you know of my church. This is this is my church. Yes, it is. You know, this is my church. Yes. You know, I'll never worship anywhere else. This is my place. I tried it. Yeah. And they're good people. Yes. Good people. Yeah. Great people. Great people. Yeah. But you know what? This is where God called me. Yeah. You may have been called yeah. somewhere else, and God bless you if you were. Yeah. Really, and I encourage you to be there. This is where God put me in my family. Yeah. Um, I'm thankful to be here. I just want to let you know that I'm encouraged. The church is encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Langford, I was inspired yeah. by that message, oh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I could go on a little bit further, I would take too much more time, but I can yes. go on a little bit further by the faith that Moses had, yeah. and when they when they circled for 40 years around that mountain, and we all know the story that happened there, and then they circled for the last time, yes. and they looked ahead of them. How many times did they did they go by the Jordan River and just didn't see it? Uh -huh. Well, it wasn't time yet. Uh -huh. I mean, they, they circled that mountain for 40 years. Forty years they circled, and they finally circled it for the last time. And they saw the Jordan River up ahead of them. But you know, when they got there and they so on and so forth, and we know the stories. And Moses sent out twelve, and the majority of them, as you can, you know, I've been uh, looking at the Book of Nehemiah there. Yeah. And, and God's given me some things on on the Book of Nehemiah and the story yeah. there of Nehemiah when yeah. when. When, when he began to pray for the restoration of Israel. And I won't go into that, but, you know, there's always going to be somebody around you that's negative. Always. Yeah, Everywhere right. you go, there's always going to be someone around you that says you can't do it. Everywhere you go. There's always going to be somebody there. But I thank God for those two boys came back. They sent them out, and they came back. Oh, my Lord, there are giants over there. We can't do it. They're too big. We can't do it, Moses. We've come, you, you, first of all, you brought, they grumbled all the way. You brought us to the Red Sea for us to die. Now you're going to water us around the wilderness for 40 years. We're not going to make it. Then they came back. But boy, there was a Joshua and there was a Caleb. Yes. Man, and I tell you what, they came back and said, are they big? Yes, they're big. Are the giants big? Yes, they are. Is it going to be tough? Yes, it is. But you should see the size of those grapes. Yeah. <laughs> you should 
should see what's over there, Moses. You should see what's over there, man. Is it going to be tough? God never said it was going to be easy. Amen. <laughs> and just because of the faith of those two boys, and they were just young men, just because of the faith that they had, that they knew there was a promised land across the Jordan River. They were driven with a purpose, brother. Those two boys left Egypt as children, and when they got to the Jordan River, they were bound and determined to not let anything stop them Amen. from crossing. All right. Man, I don't know if that does anything to you, but brother, I can feel like I can run through a troop and leap over a wall or pull them all up and say, leap over a wall and run through a troop. It don't make a difference to me. Man, I've never been more encouraged in my life, and I want the devil to know it. That was a faith message, brother. And brother, uh, brother Langford, that inspired me tonight. That inspired me tonight. Oh, yeah. Sister, one of those songs of praising him inspired me tonight. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Now, David said, I was glad when they said unto me. Yeah. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me. Let's go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Wasn't discouraged? He wasn't discouraged. No. Brother, read, uh, read all 150 chapters in that book of Psalms, brother. David said, praise ye the Lord. Yeah. Well, you don't think David went through life's troubles and trials and tribulations and bumps and bangs and he fought a giant and he fought a lion and he fought a bear and he fought this and he fought that. But in the end, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Man, that's encouraging. Now look back. And when I see those things, I look back and I say, you know what? They did it. They faced it with no air conditioning. They faced it with no cruise control. They faced it with no job to go to, no paycheck. They did it. They did it. And they, you know, and they just did it. You know, here we are, Mike. I tell you what, the air conditioning in my house gets below 74 degrees, and I'm starting to get a little warm. So, you know, see, here I am, so spoiled. And I'll say, you know what? Let me tell you something. Those boys marched for 40 years. Those boys marched for 40 years in the same sandals. And when Joshua and Caleb got to the Jordan River, they still said, we can go just a little bit farther. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord, use me. What do you need me to do, Lord? Just tell me what to do. I'd rather be a doorkeeper, Moses. I'd rather suffer the afflictions with the people of God. Just tell me what to do, Lord. I'll be here. I'll lift your hands, Brother Paul. Please, glad to see you, Brother Paul. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You know, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes to encourage the church, to lift the church, to build the church. Whatever it takes. I'm happy. I'm happy. My house is happy. My job is happy. My kids are happy. My family's happy. And I'm healthy. Take that, devil. I got two beautiful kids. Great mother and father, great mother in law, father in law. Yeah. I ain't got nothing to grumble about. All right. Because right. my back hurt every day. But that's okay, Brother Dean. God gave me breath to breathe. Okay. Oh, my, my feet hurt. I stand on my feet 12 hours a day. But that's okay. When I go home tonight, I'm going to have some sweet tea in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. Quit looking at the negative side of things and say, hey, listen, I got a door, a home to go to. Man, I'm so, I'm a little wired if you can't tell. I'm just putting him on. You know, I just want the devil to know. And brother, it don't make a difference what he does. We're going to swing back. We're going to swing back. We're going to swing back. You know, I heard Brother Langford read a book full of people that are that are in need and in prayer. And that's okay. We're going to keep swinging back. Yes. And keep swinging back. Yes. Yes. Amen. You know, my dad, 
over here was a big fan. As a kid, we grew up. He was a big fan of Rocky Marciano. The only fighter, the only fighter ever to not lose a fight. The only one. And the way he fought, I watched some old footage. The way he fought, brother, he would stand there and let you beat him. He would stand there and let you beat on him for 11 rounds. He was in such great condition. He would just let you hit him. He's bloody, you know. He would just let you, but brother, once he saw you got tired. Man, he, he was like, it was like blood in the water for a shark, son. He could see it, and that's when he would go on the attack. Well, you know what? If you've been beat up, keep right, holding on one more round. Come on. Keep holding on one more round. Keep holding on one more round. Keep holding on one more round. And when you see the devil get a little bit tired, bam! Keep holding on. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. of my kids I you know I I, I just I, I'll just sit I'll sit in uh, quietness in my house and you know it kind of kind of really frustrates my wife anymore because the just the lack of communication and not because I'm not communicating I, I just I just sit and think sometimes you know I try to think about everything positive and you know when something goes wrong so you know you know what does these sandwiches for dinner and there's me well so sometimes the, the wife and kids don't want sandwiches for dinner so, you know, you know, we'll get something else to eat. But I always try to find something positive anymore. You know, you couldn't have asked me that a year ago. Uh, oh, my goodness. I've been, oh, man. Uh, the light's out in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> the water don't work good. Right. Man, if they're, in, if they're brushing their teeth in this one and they're brushing their teeth in this one, I used to say get in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find something positive anymore about it. I ain't looking at the negative anymore. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. You shouldn't do it either. You shouldn't do it either. You shouldn't do it either. If the air conditioning quit working in your house, go turn the fan on. Find something positive. Call for the neighbor. They'll come fix it for you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying, church? Yeah. Just stay positive. Yeah. Look the devil right in his face yes. and say, you know what? It don't matter if you keep hitting me. That's okay. Yes. I know where my strength comes from. Yes. Right. Right. My strength comes from the Lord. Yes. You know, I remember the story. You know, the doctors and Sister Marlo can give her own testimony. But the doctor said that she had a heart attack and all these things were wrong. And we didn't believe it as a church and she didn't believe it. And went back to the doctor and said, no. The doctor said, what are you talking about? You didn't have a heart attack. All right. Take that, devil. All right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Quit going to God. I mean, quit going to, to God and tell him how big your problems are. Go to your problem and tell them how big your God is. Praise God. 
I don't know if you've heard it. I don't know if you, but I'm trying to stay positive here, man. Put him on the run, son. Put him on the run. I ain't got time for you, devil. I love you, church. I love you, Sister Annette. I love you. I love you, Sister Annette. I love this church. I love this people. I love my Lord. I love what I'm feeling in the last few months in this place. You know, there's such, Brother Marlowe was right the other night. There is such a fresh spirit in you. You know, when we begin, and we, and we, and we have, when we started looking on his face. Oh, yeah. Thank God. That's when he began to smile down on us. Oh, yes. It's, it's such an encouraging spirit that I feel in here. Oh, yeah. Now, Brother Dean, I've known you for 36, 37 years now. We used to live with you guys, don't worry. I don't think I've seen you smile any more than I have in the last month. And you're fighting a battle, brother. But that's okay. Keep the oh, devil yeah. on the run. Right. Yeah. That's right. Keep him on the run. Keep him on the run. Oh, yeah. You know why? The breastplate there, why it doesn't speak of anything on the back. But you ain't supposed to fight a battle with your back to the enemy. Facing, facing, and look unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Amen. Amen.